Hello and welcome to GarageBand Lesson 7. In this lesson we're going to record using real and software instruments. We're starting off with a USB microphone. I've got a blue snowball mic that's hooked up to my computer and we need to set the preferences in GarageBand so that GarageBand knows where the sound is coming from. Audio MIDI. The default is the built-in input and output. We need to change the input. We want the sound to go in from the snowball mic. Anything that's connected to your computer that could possibly be used as an input device will show up in the drop-down menu. If you have something connected to your computer but it's not showing up in the drop-down, then you need to work on your connection. And there are some tips about connections in the reference guide linked on the lesson web page. So we're just going to click on the blue snowball mic and yes we want to change the audio driver and we're ready to go. We're going to close that up and we need a new file. USB mics are great for voice recordings. Double click, we'll call this USB mic. When you're using a USB microphone you can just set it up in a room and whatever sound reaches the microphone will go in. When you open a voice project it has a male and a female default. We need to get rid of one of those and we're ready to record. And we're going to take a quick look. This is the transport controls. We've used those before to stop and start when we're listening to our audio files. This moves it ahead one measure, back one measure, this goes to the beginning of the song. We're going to use the record button. And before we record we want to make sure that we've got enough sound going in that microphone. We look up here, we've got our little fake LEDs and the sound is going in. Right now we have extra sound going in because it's going through the snowball mic and it's also going through my headset which I'm using to make this recording. So here we go and we're going to record. Oh and look, I forgot to take that annoying metronome off. So we're going to go up to control, metronome, command Z. I'm really good at that keyboard shortcut because I mess up a lot when I'm recording. And we're ready to record. Testing, testing, one, two, three and we stop, go back to the beginning. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Perfect, and that's recording with a USB microphone. All right, I've got my USB keyboard hooked up and now it's time to change our GarageBand preferences again. We need to have the computer find my keyboard and there it is and we change the drivers and we'll be ready to go. If you switch USB inputs and your new one is not showing up in the drop down menu, then what I usually do is I just quit GarageBand, connect things up the way I want it, start it up again, and then it always shows up. So there are some different connection tips in the reference guide linked on the Lesson 7 page. Okay, we're ready. We've got the keyboard. So we need a piano song, piano, create, and when the project opens up, we don't have an on-screen keyboard visible. The computer knows we have a keyboard attached. So now it's time to record and this time I am going to use the metronome. So we're going to go to project and I'm not a very good keyboard player so 122 is too fast for me. We're going to go down to 80. That's a good speed for me and we're going to just press on the keys here. All right, and I turned that up, we're ready to go. And we'll play that back. Go to the beginning, play. Okay, wonderful. Okay, now this is what I really like about GarageBand. We're going to go over here. Instead of the I icon for our loops, we're going to click on the letter I icon and we get different instrument sounds. So we can take that wonderfully exciting twinkle twinkle little star and change the instrument. Let's try harpsichord. Whatever whirly is. Oh, whirly, sorry. 
So we, we can change a lot of the sounds there. If we go to different types of instruments, here's a marimba up in the mallet section. We can do strings. Okay, some sounds obviously work better than others. What I really like about this is that because I'm not a great piano player, I can record something slower and then just change the tempo. We're going to go back to mallets. I like that marimba. We still have our keyboard connected, but we're going to go back to the built-in inputs so we I can show you the keyboards that are included with GarageBand. Close that and we're going to get rid of that. So we're going to delete and we're going to use the uh, go up to window. We're going to start with this keyboard. We've seen that every time we opened up a file we got rid of it. And just looking at that little keyboard you'd click on the keys and there's your sound. But boy, it's really hard to aim for those itty bitty keys. So we can do this. I just discovered this. Look at that. Nice and big. So we can get a large size keyboard. We can stretch it out here and get more notes. And we can move this so that we're going to different areas on the keyboard. Very low. Oh, we're still on marimba. And so we've lot, got lots of possibilities there. We're going to record. So it's a little harder for me as a uh, keyboard player to just aim for the notes here. But if you've got students working and you don't have keyboards to attach, that's a pretty good option because it really does look like a piano. And the other option is click here on the icon and we turn it into musical typing. So then you're using the actual computer keyboard to enter notes. And this is a little harder for me, but I just put my pinky ring finger and here's my thumb and my other thumb and we just go. It's a little bit easier for me to do the fingers here than it is for me to click with the mouse, but what I really like best is just actually using a USB keyboard attached. But there are different options for note entry and whether you are entering notes with a USB keyboard, this keyboard, or the musical typing, either way you have the options for changing your sound, different instruments, different tempos. And that's recording with GarageBand. Thanks for watching.